The Cod Wars were a series of confrontations between the United Kingdom and Iceland regarding fishing rights in the North Atlantic. Each of the disputes ended with Iceland's victory. The final Cod War concluded with a highly favourable agreement for Iceland, as the United Kingdom conceded to a 200 nautical mile Icelandic exclusive fishery zone. The term Cod War was coined by a British journalist in early September 1958. None of the Cod Wars meet in any of the common thresholds for a conventional war though, and may more accurately be described as militarised interstate disputes. Background and history Fishermen from the British Isles began to fish in the Icelandic waters around 1400. From the early 16th century onwards, English sailors and fishermen were a major presence in the waters off Iceland. Some Icelandic historians view the history of Iceland's struggle for control of its maritime resources in ten episodes. The first of these Cod Wars was a dispute between Norway and England in 1415-1425 over the latter's trading with Iceland, which was in violation of Norway's monopoly on the Icelandic trade. This dispute ended when the English arrested Eric of Pomerania's officials in Iceland, effectively restoring the Anglo-Icelandic trade. The agreement reached in 1976 is considered the final and tenth Cod War, with increases in fishing ability enabled by steam power in the latter part of the 19th century. Pressure was exerted on boat owners and skippers to exploit new grounds. Large catches in Icelandic waters meant voyages across the North Atlantic became more regular. In 1893, the Danish government, which had governed Iceland and the Faroe Islands, claimed a fishing limit of 50 nmi around their shores. British trawler owners disputed this claim and continued to send their ships to Icelandic waters. Danish gunboats patrolling the area escorted a number of vessels to port, fined them and confiscated their catch. The British government did not recognise this claim, on the grounds that setting such a precedent would lead to similar claims by nations which surrounded the North Sea, which would be damaging to the British fishing industry. In 1896 the United Kingdom made an agreement with Denmark which allowed for British vessels to use any Icelandic port for shelter, provided they stowed their gear and trawl nets. In return, British vessels were not to fish east of a line from a loony part of Thornodeska Islet. In April 1899 the steam trawler Caspian was fishing off the Faroe Islands when a Danish gunboat tried to arrest her for allegedly fishing illegally inside the limits. The trawler refused to stop and was fired upon. Eventually the trawler was caught but, before going aboard the Danish vessel, the skipper ordered the mate to make a dash for it. The Caspian set off at full speed. The gunboat fired several shots at the unarmed boat but could not catch up with the trawler, which returned heavily damaged to Grimsby. On board the Danish gunboat the skipper of the Caspian was lashed to the mast. A court held at Thorshau and convicted him on several counts including illegal fishing and attempted assault and he was jailed for 30 days, with many British trawlers being charged and fined by Danish gunboats for fishing illegally within the 13-mile limit. The British press began to inquire why this Danish action against British interests was allowed to continue without intervention by the Royal Navy. The issue was left largely unresolved and the reduction in fishing activity brought about by the First World War effectively ended the dispute. Attempts by the Icelanders to ban foreign trawling within Iceland's traditional territorial waters were unsuccessful. British gunboat diplomacy, the display of naval force, in 1896-1897 led to the Anglo-Danish Territorial Waters Agreement of 1901 which set three-mile territorial limits for Iceland for 50 years. The Icelandic fisheries grew in importance for the British fishing industry towards the end of the 19th century. While data is incomplete for the pre-World War I period, one historian argues that the Icelandic fishing grounds were very important to the British fishing industry as a whole. Data for the period 1919 to 1938 shows a significant increase in the British total catches in Icelandic waters. 
the British catches in Iceland were more than twice of the combined catches of all other grounds of the British distant water fleet. Icelanders grew increasingly dismayed at the British presence. After independence from Denmark in 1944, Iceland cancelled the agreement between Denmark and the UK made in 1901. Iceland and the United Kingdom were involved in a dispute from May 1952 to November 1956 over Iceland's unilateral extension of its fishery limits, from 3 to 4 miles. Britain took the case to the International Court of Justice, however, unlike in the Cod Wars. The United Kingdom never sent its navy into Icelandic waters. The British trawling industry did, however, implement costly sanctions on Iceland by imposing a landing ban on Icelandic fish in British ports. The landing ban was a major blow to the Icelandic fishing industry and caused consternation among Icelandic statesmen. Cold War politics proved favorable for Iceland, as the USSR, seeking influence in Iceland, stepped in to purchase Icelandic fish. The US, fearing for greater Soviet influence in Iceland, also purchased Icelandic fish and saw to it that Spain and Italy would also purchase Icelandic fish. USSR US involvement therefore made the British landing ban ineffective. Some scholars refer to the dispute of 1952 to 1956 as one of the Cod Wars, given that the object of the dispute and the costs and risks of the dispute were similar to those in the other three Cod Wars. Just as the other Cod Wars, the dispute of 1952 to 1956 ended with Iceland achieving its aims as the Icelandic four-mile fishery limits were recognized by the United Kingdom following a decision by the Organization of European Economic Cooperation in 1956. Two years later, in 1958, the United Nations convened the first international conference on the law of the sea attended by 86 states. Several countries sought to extend the limit of their territorial waters to 12 miles, but the conference did not reach any firm conclusions. First Cod War The First Cod War lasted from 1 September 1958 until February, March 1961. It began as soon as a new Icelandic law that expanded the Icelandic fishery zone, from 4 to 12 nautical miles came into force at midnight on 1 September. All NATO members opposed the unilateral Icelandic extension. The British declared that their trawlers would fish under protection from their warships in three areas, out of the West Fjords, north of Horn and to the southeast of Iceland. All in all, 20 British trawlers, four warships and a supply vessel were inside the newly declared zones. This deployment was expensive. In February 1960 Lord Carrington, the minister responsible of the Royal Navy, reported that his ships near Iceland had expended half a million pounds sterling worth of oil since the new year and that a total of 53 British warships had taken part in the operations. Against this Iceland could deploy seven patrol vessels and a single PBY-6A Catalina flying boat. The deployment of the British Navy to contested waters led to protests in Iceland. Demonstrations against the British Embassy were met with taunts by the British ambassador, Andrew Gilchrist, as he played bagpipe music and military marches on full blast on his gramophone. Many incidents followed. The Icelanders were, however, at a disadvantage in patrolling the contested waters due to the size of the area and the limited number of patrol ships. According to one historian, only the flagship Thor could effectively arrest and, if necessary, tow a trawler to harbour. On 4 September ICG V. Agir, an Icelandic patrol vessel, attempted to take her British trawler off the West Fjords, but was thwarted when HMS Russell intervened and the two vessels collided. On 6 October V. Per second Maria Julia fired three shots at the trawler Kingston Emerald, forcing the trawler to escape to sea. On 12 November V. Per second Thor encountered the trawler Hackness, which had not stowed its nets legally. 
Hackness did not stop until Thor had fired two blanks and one live shell off its bow. Once again, HMS Russell came to the rescue and its shipmaster ordered the Icelandic captain to leave the trawler alone as it was not within the 4 NMI limit, recognized by the British government. Thor's captain, Eric Hoor Christofferson, said that he would not do so, and ordered his men to approach the trawler with the gun manned. In response, the Russell threatened to sink the Icelandic boat if it so much as fired one shot at the Hackness. More British ships then arrived and the Hackness retreated. Icelandic officials threatened to withdraw Iceland's membership of NATO and expel U.S. forces from Iceland unless a satisfactory conclusion could be reached to the dispute. Even prominently pro-Western cabinet members were forced to resort to the threats. As it was Iceland's chief leverage and it would have been domestic political suicide not to use this leverage. Following the United Nations Conference on the Law of the Sea between 1960 and 1961, Britain and Iceland came to a settlement, which stipulated that Iceland got 12-mile fishery limits but that Britain would have limited rights to fish in the outer six miles for three years. This deal was very similar to one that Iceland offered in the weeks and days leading up to its unilateral extension in 1958. As a part of the agreement, it was stipulated that any future disagreement between Iceland and Britain in the matter of fishery zones would be sent to the International Court of Justice in The Hague. In total, the first Cod War saw a total of 37 Royal Navy ships and 7,000 sailors protecting the fishing fleet from six Icelandic gunboats and their 100 coast guards. Second Cod War the Second Cod War between the United Kingdom and Iceland lasted from September 1972 until the signing of a temporary agreement in November 1973. The Icelandic government had two goals in extending its fishery limits, to conserve fish stocks and to increase Iceland's share of total catches. The reason why Iceland pursued 50-mile fishery limits rather than 200-mile limits were that the most fruitful fishing grounds were within the 50 miles and patrolling the 200-mile limits would have been more difficult. The British contested the Icelandic extension with two goals in mind, to achieve the greatest possible catch quota for British fishermen in the contested waters and to prevent a de facto recognition of a unilateral extension of a fishery jurisdiction, which would set a precedent for other extensions. All Western European states and the Warsaw Pact opposed Iceland's unilateral extension. African states declared support for Iceland's extension. After a meeting in 1971 where the Icelandic Prime Minister argued that the Icelandic cause was a part of a broader battle against colonialism in imperialism, on 1 September 1972 the enforcement of the law that expanded the Icelandic fishery limits to 50 nmi began. Numerous British and West German trawlers continued fishing within the new zone on the first day. The Icelandic leftist coalition which governed at the time ignored the treaty that stipulated the involvement of the International Court of Justice. It said that it was not bound by agreements made by the previous centre-right government, with Ludwig Josephson, the fisheries minister, stating that the basis for our independence is economic independence. The next day, ICGV Agia chased 16 trawlers, in waters east of the country, out of the 50 NMI zone. On 5 September 1972, at 10.25, ICGV Agia, under Gutmundur Arnestad's command, encountered an unmarked trawler fishing northeast of Hornbanke. The master of this black hull trawler refused to divulge the trawler's name and number and, after being warned to follow the Coast Guard's orders, played rule, Britannia, over the radio. At 10.40 the net cutter was deployed into the water for the first time and Agia sailed along the trawler's port side. The fishermen tossed a thick nylon rope into the water as the patrol ship closed in, attempting to disable its propeller. After passing the trawler, Agia veered to the trawler's starboard side. The net cutter, 160 fathoms behind the patrol vessel, sliced one of the trawling wires. 
As ICGV Agir came about to circle the unidentified trawler, its angry crew threw coal as well as garbage and a large fire axe at the Coast Guard vessel. A considerable amount of swearing and shouting came through the radio, which resulted in the trawler being identified as Peter Scott. During this war the Icelandic Coast Guard started to use net cutters to cut the trawling lines of non-Icelandic vessels fishing within the new exclusion zone. On 18 January 1973 the nets of 18 trawlers were cut. This forced the British seamen to leave the Icelandic fishery zone unless they had the protection of the Royal Navy. The day after, large, fast tugboats were sent to their defence. The first was the statesman. The British considered this insufficient and formed a special group to defend the trawlers. On 23 January 1973 the volcano Eldfell on Hymir erupted, forcing the Coast Guard to divert its attention to rescuing the inhabitants of the small island. On 17 May the British trawlers left the Icelandic waters, only to return two days later with British frigates. The Icelandic lighthouse tender v per second Arva Cure collided with four British vessels on 1 June and six days later ICGV Agir collided with HMS Silla, when it was reconnoitering for icebergs off the West Fjords, even though no trawlers were present. On 29 August the Icelandic Coast Guard suffered the only fatality of the conflict after ICGV Agir collided with yet another British frigate. An engineer on board the Icelandic vessel died by electrocution from his welding equipment after sea water flooded the compartment where he was making hull repairs. On 16 September Joseph Lunds, Secretary General of NATO, arrived in Reykjavik to talk with Icelandic ministers, who had been pressed to leave NATO as it had been of no help to the Icelandic people in the conflict. After a series of talks within NATO, British warships were recalled on 3 October. An agreement was signed on 8 November which limited British fishing activities to certain areas inside the 50 NMI limit. Resolving the dispute that time, the resolution was based on the premise that British trawlers would limit their annual catch to no more than 130,000 tonnes. This agreement expired in November 1975, and the Third Cod War began. The Second Cod War threatened Iceland's membership in NATO and the U.S. military presence in Iceland. It is the closest that Iceland has come to cancelling its bilateral defense agreement with the U.S. Icelandic NATO membership and hosting of U.S. military had considerable importance to Cold War strategy due to Iceland's location in the middle of the GIUK gap. C.S. Forestai incident on 19 July 1974, more than nine months after the signing of the agreement. One of the largest wet fish stern trawlers in the British fleet, C.S. Forrester, which had been fishing inside the 12 MMI limit, was shelled and captured by the Icelandic gunboat V per second Thor after a 100-mile long pursuit. C.S. Forrester was shelled with non-explosive ammunition after repeated warnings. The trawler was hit by at least two rounds, which damaged the engine room and a water tank. She was later boarded and towed to Iceland. Skipper Richard Taylor was condemned to 30 days of imprisonment and fined £5,000. He was released on bail after the owners paid £2,232. The trawler was also allowed to depart with a catch of 200 tons of fish. Owners paid a total of £26,300 for the release of the ship.